Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the flag on the Pentagon building. The flag hangs today from sunrise to sunset in honor of Patriot Day and in remembrance of the 184 lives lost at the Pentagon. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United States performed by the United States Army Brass Quintet. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Navy Chief of Chaplains, Rear Admiral Margaret Kibben. Would you pray with me? Almighty and eternal God, we pause this day in this hallowed space and at monuments and memorials around the country to remember, to remember husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, children, brothers, sisters, friends, to remember the warmth of their smiles, the touch of their hands, their last words, the gifts of their lives. Now help us never forget that it has been your grace which has allowed us the time we were able to share, which has enabled us to hold on to the fondest of memories and provides us moments like this to cherish forever. God, we pause this day to remember, to remember those who first responded the unsung heroes, civilian and military, emergency services, law enforcement, who fought valiantly that day to preserve the countless lives trapped within these walls, and those who over the last 15 years across the globe sacrificed their lives, defending the freedom our enemies sought and still seek to destroy. Help us then never to forget the examples of courage and fortitude these men and women demonstrated in the face of danger and hardship, nor to forget the ideals which have defined our nation, which they died to defend, and which are now the responsibility of every American citizen to uphold. And now, as we remember, we ask you not to forget us. Allow your will to transform our memorial into a lasting commitment to those whom we have lost, to the nation that you have preserved, and to a future defined by the values we hold dear. It is in the strength of your name we pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, 15 years ago, at 9.37 a.m., the Pentagon was attacked. Please join us in observing a moment of silence to remember those who perished. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Joe Dunford. Mr. President, Secretary and Mrs. Carter, distinguished guests, and most importantly to the family and friends of those we lost on September 2001, and to those gathered here who survived the attack on the Pentagon, good morning. 
It's been said that the manner in which a nation or a community cares for its fallen reflects the people's respect for their land and their loyalty to high ideals. We're here today in that spirit to honor those who lost their lives on 9-11, to maintain our commitment to never forget, and to demonstrate our loyalty to high ideals. Whether they were ordinary citizens going about their daily lives or those in uniform serving to protect our values and way of life, those we lost 15 years ago today were killed for what they believed, what they represented. Over the years, I've heard the attacks of 9-11 described by some as senseless acts. And perhaps it does seem senseless to those who have endured the loss of a spouse, father, mother, brother, sister, or friend. But to the individuals who conducted these acts, the loss of life was not senseless. The terrorists who struck on 9-11 did so with a sense of purpose. They did so in a direct attack on our way of life and on our values. So as we recall the events that took place here 15 years ago, those still serving should ask for God's blessing on those who died, those who continue suffering from injuries, and those who were left behind. But we should also recall who we are, what we do, and why we serve. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, Coast Guardsmen, and civil servants serve because of our belief in America. We serve because of our belief in high ideals. And we serve to protect our families, friends, and fellow citizens. If today, and in the years ahead, Recalling the memories of 9-11 leaves us with a renewed sense of commitment to our values. If today's gathering reminds us of how important it remains to defend those values, then those who are taken from us prematurely will be able to look down and know that their lives had meaning. And they'll be able to take pride in how we are carrying on their legacy. It's now my privilege to introduce someone who has spent his life in service, our Secretary of Defense, the Honorable Ashton Carter. Today, we return to the site of an attack motivated by barbarism and hate, an attack that rattled the world, that shook this mighty building, and that took 184 lives from us here at the Pentagon, as well as thousands in New York and Pennsylvania. Mr. President, Chairman Dunford, honored guests, family, and friends of those we lost on 9-11. Today, we come together as we have every year since 2001. We come together to remember those we lost that day and to stand again with their friends and families to honor those we'll never forget. We come together to reflect on all we've done together to recover and rebuild, to respond and to retaliate. And we come together to recommit to our hard but certain mission to protect our country and our people and to make a better world for our children. To all those here before us who lost loved ones 15 years ago, our hearts and deepest sorrows are with you. We know that we can never fully know what you feel on this solemn day as you return to this place. But we do know, we fully know, what your loved one's sacrifice means to our department and to our country, and what your resolve means to all of us as we come to work each day to continue the mission your fallen, fallen loved ones summon us to. As we do, your example makes us stronger, and for that, we're grateful. We need that strength, and we have that resolve as we continue to confront and defeat those who conspired to attack us then and all who aspire to do so today. Indeed, when someone strikes at the heart of what we stand for, we respond with the full might of the finest fighting force the world has ever known. Because our memory is long and our reach and resolve are endless, our enemies cannot hide, they cannot escape, they cannot endure. Wherever they are, they will surely 
no matter how long it takes, come to feel the righteous fist of American might. Since September 11, 2001, millions of America's best young men and women have volunteered to respond to those attacks and to defend what's best about America and civilization itself. Our freedoms, our values, our care for life, our way of life. It's because of those Americans, their service and their sacrifice, that the United States has hammered those who, who attacked us with every manner and measure of American power, choking terrorist networks, thwarting looming attacks, and bringing Osama bin Laden to justice eternal. It's because of those Americans that 15 years later, as the threat of terrorism evolves, our fight continues. Whether they still call themselves Al-Qaeda or cloak themselves beneath the black flag of ISIL, nothing changes who terrorists are or what we'll do to protect our country. For we possess limitless resolve to win and the wind of goodness at our backs. And it's because of those Americans that even as we confront the forces of darkness, the United States has continued to light the way towards a better future. Whether in world wars or in the long battle against terrorists, our men and women in uniform, steadfast ever, have provided the security and upheld the values that have allowed millions upon millions of people, not just in the United States, but around the world, to be safe, to raise their children, to dream their dreams, to live lives that are full. And as a result, decades from now, when visitors to this memorial pause to remember the lives lost here on September 11, 2001, they too will honor the men and women of the 9-11 generation and give thanks for all they accomplished. They will forever be the true reflection of who we are as a nation and a military, a powerful memorial to those we lost 15 years ago, and a charge to us at a time of great change and challenge that we must continue to meet. Few have been more dedicated to doing so than our Commander-in-Chief. President Obama has taken, each year now of his presidency, the time to remember 9-11. Whether here, in New York, or elsewhere, he's never missed a year, not one. He's also never forgotten that day or those we lost. I can tell you that no one pays more care each and every time he sends men and women forth from this building into harm's way. And I can tell you he never relaxes in pursuit of those who threaten America. Ladies and gentlemen, for those and many other reasons, it's my great privilege to introduce the President of the United States, Barack Obama. you back. Good morning. morning. Scripture tells us, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Secretary Carter, Chairman Dunford, outstanding members of our armed forces, and most of all, survivors of that September day and the families of those we lost. It is a great honor once again to be with you on this day, a day that I know is still difficult, but which reveals the love and faithfulness in your hearts and in the heart of our nation. We remember and we will never forget the nearly 3,000 beautiful lives taken from us so cruelly, including 184 men, women, and children here, the youngest just three years old. We honor the courage of those who put themselves in harm's way to save people they never knew. We come together in prayer and in gratitude for the strength that has fortified us across these 15 years. 
and we renew the love and the faith that binds us together as one American family. Fifteen years may seem like a long time, but for the families who lost a piece of their heart that day, I imagine it can seem like just yesterday. Perhaps it's the memory of a last kiss given to a spouse, or the last goodbye to a mother or father, a sister, or brother. We wonder how their lives might have unfolded, how their dreams might have taken shape. And I am mindful that no words we offer or deeds we do can ever truly erase the pain of their absence. And yet you, the survivors and families of 9-11, your steadfast love and faithfulness has been an inspiration to me and to our entire country. Even as you've mourned, you've summoned the strength to carry on. In the names of those you've lost, you've started scholarships and volunteered in your communities and done your best to be a good neighbor and a good friend and a good citizen. And in your grief and grace, you have reminded us that together there's nothing we Americans cannot overcome. The question before us, as always, is how do we preserve the legacy of those we lost? How do we live up to their example? And how do we keep their spirit alive in our own hearts? Well, we have seen the answer in a generation of Americans, our men and women in uniform, diplomats, intelligence, homeland security, and law enforcement professionals, all who have stepped forward to serve and who have risked and given their lives to keep us safe. Thanks to their extraordinary service, we've dealt devastating blows to al-Qaeda. We've delivered justice to Osama bin Laden. We've strengthened our homeland security. We've prevented attacks. We've saved lives. We resolve to continue doing everything in our power to protect this country that we love. And today, we once again pay tribute to these patriots, both military and civilian, who serve in our name, including those far away from home in Afghanistan and Iraq. Perhaps most of all, we stay true to the spirit of this day by defending not only our country, but also our ideals. Fifteen years into this fight, the threat has evolved. With our stronger defenses, terrorists often attack, uh, attempt attacks on a smaller but still deadly scale. Hateful ideologies urge people in their own country to commit unspeakable violence. We've mourned the loss of innocence from Boston to San Bernardino to Orlando. Groups like al-Qaeda, like ISIL, know that we will never be able, they will never be able to defeat a nation as great and as strong as America. So instead, they try to terrorize in the hopes that they can stoke enough fear that we turn on each other, and that we change who we are or how we live. And that's why it is so important today that we reaffirm our character as a nation, a people drawn from every corner of the world, every color, every religion, every background, bound by a creed as old as our founding, e pluribus unum. Out of many, we are one. For we know that our diversity, our patchwork heritage, is not a weakness. It is still and always will be one of our greatest strengths. This is the America that was attacked that September morning. This is the America that we must remain true to. Across our country today, Americans are coming together in service and remembrance. 
We run our fingers over the names and memorial benches here at the Pentagon. We walk the hallowed grounds of a Pennsylvania field. We look up at a gleaming tower that pierces the New York City skyline. But in the end, the most enduring memorial to those we lost is ensuring the America that we continue to be, that we stay true to ourselves, that we stay true to what's best in us, that we do not let others divide us. As I mark this solemn day with you for the last time as President, I think of Americans whose stories I've been humbled to know these past eight years, Americans who I believe embody the true spirit of 9-11. It's the courage of Wells Crowther, just 24 years old, in the South Tower, the man in the red bandana who spent his final moments helping strangers to safety before the towers fell. It's the resilience of the firehouse on 8th Avenue, patriots who lost more than a dozen men but who still suit up every day as the pride of Midtown. It's the love of a daughter, Peyton Wall of New Jersey, whose father, in his last moments on the phone from the towers, told her, I will always be watching over you. It's the resolve of those Navy SEALs who made sure justice was finally done, who served as we must live as a nation, getting each other's backs, looking out for each other, united, one mission, one team. It's the ultimate sacrifice of men and women who rest for eternity not far from here in gentle green hills in perfect formation. Americans who gave their lives in faraway places so that we can be here today strong and free and proud. It's all of us, every American who gets up each day lives our lives, carries on. Because as Americans, we do not give in to fear. We will preserve our freedoms and the way of life that makes us a beacon to the world. Let us not, let not steadfast love and faithfulness forsake you. Write them on the tablet of your heart in how we conduct ourselves as individuals and as a nation. We have the opportunity each and every day to live up to the sacrifice of those heroes that we lost. May God bless the memory of the loved ones here and across the country. They remain in our hearts today. May he watch over these faithful families and all who protect us. And may God forever bless the United States of America.